All right, everyone. Welcome to the session. It's uh, after the coffee break, so everyone should be awake. And we have uh, a lot of new excitement things coming out in uh, Citrix networking that I'm going to talk about. So I'm here, Manny R. Um, I run part of the networking business, focused on ADC and application security. And with me, I have Chalan, who focuses on SD-WAN and ITM. ITM, that's right, yeah. So I think we have three parts of the presentation. The first part really ties up into uh, how does the networking portfolio power the intelligent workspace that you saw in the morning. The second part is going to focus on what's new in SD-WAN and ITM, which is how users connect to applications. The third one is focused around the application delivery and application security as to the guts of how the applications are hosted in data centers and what's new over there. So every business, if you go to see today, is going through a transformation, a digital transformation that was talked in the morning. Um, the CIOs or the chief uh, digitization officers are looking at cloud adoption, looking at modernization of applications, they're looking at automating all the processes, and the goals are pretty simple. They want to make sure they can uh, connect with a better experience with the customers. So customer experience is a key journey. The second goal really is to make the business very agile and be able to react to the market inflections that are happening. And the third key point in terms of the goal is to have better employee productivity and engagement that what David Henschel covered in the morning. But in order to achieve these functions, there are challenges that the CIO and CDOs have. The challenges really span across three fundamental things. They, you know, we want to have uh, productivity of the employees um, and the applications. We want to have the right performance delivered, as well as uh, security to secure end-to-end. So with these challenges, if you go to see, um, Citrix is the only company that can deliver users to connect to applications in a high productive, highly performance intensive and secure fashion. And the way we actually deliver that is by this picture shown with an integrated approach, where the left side of the picture shows the intelligent workspace and how we're making it much more intelligent to create productivity. The right side of the picture shows the applications that the workspace users are using and how they are hosted in data centers and how they, they are delivered from data centers and secured from data centers. And the middle picture actually is how the users connect to these applications through the WAN interconnect links as well as through uh, uh, different points of presences. So we have an integrated approach with this end-to-end -end picture that we can deliver basically the three parts of the challenges, which is the performance, productivity, as well as security. In order to bring this to fruition, I wanted to show you an example uh, use case where, uh, which is on performance. Let's say if you have a user sitting in the workspace where the performance is degrading and the performance is not working to the right capabilities, then this integrated picture shows that you can have performance issues and degradation because of three big reasons. The first one is on the user side, you can have user issues, you can have network issues, or you can have application performance issues. And because we have an integrated approach in our portfolio with the intelligent workspace connecting to applications through our RAN portfolio, we can exactly pinpoint through our Citrix analytics. Uh, part of it was shown in the morning with the performance analytics uh, video that was shown, where you can exactly pinpoint that degradation in the user experience is coming because of which of the three reasons so that way you don't have the IT admins and the network admins and the end user admins finger pointing at each other of whose fault it is. So quickly correlating, quickly finding out what the issue is, providing the remedial action and self-correcting is a key goal of this end-to-end -end integrated performance picture. <coughs> in, in fact, to bring this to realization, we have in, our, in the show floor, which starts at six today, a demo in the futures area to show this mock-up of what this integrated performance looks like for any applications being accessed from workspace. The next uh, use case to bring this integrated picture to realization is on security. Securing users and securing applications is a fundamental paramount thing for all CIOs and CDOs. So how do you actually bring this together in this integrated picture? Some parts of that were shown in the morning <coughs> where we talked about the UEBA characteristics, the user behavior, real detection that we can do in Citrix Analytics from a user-centric standpoint, as well as the entire application security portfolio that we built 
And then in the middle, we have the entire access control and security to bring this to end-to-end uh, -end security. And again, you can triangulate and find out <coughs> all the security issues for users trying to connect to applications and make sure that we protect users as well as applications. So these are two fundamental use cases where networking powers the workspace. I'll hand it over now to Chalan to talk about SD-WAN and ITM. Thank you, Mihir. All right, SD-WAN and ITM. So this morning you heard a lot about cloud and applications with PJ, with Brett Anderson. And the key point here is that enterprises are using more and more apps, and more of them are in the cloud. So the main mission for SD-WAN is emerging to be essentially helping with this with the consumption of this application suite, mostly in the cloud or SaaS. And we have three focus areas. First is about experience. If you don't have the great experience, people aren't going to use the applications, and therefore your mission will, be, will not be successful. And we're covering both SaaS and cloud, as well as, as you heard a little bit this morning in the keynote, virtual apps and desktops. So I'm going to share you some more details about that one. It is still about security. We have to have a strong security story. In fact, SD-WAN and Firewall are starting to intersect, in some cases merge. So we have some good new updates for you in that front. And lastly, it is about choice of cloud. Many of our customers use one or more clouds, and you're going to see that we're really advancing our connectivity and automation into cloud. You saw some of that this morning in the keynote, and we have a tiny bit more detail, and of course you can learn a lot more about these in the additional sessions. So, so let's, get, let's get started with some of the biggest new piece of capability that we're delivering. So virtual apps and desktops, and Citrix managed desktops. This is a main push, of course, for Citrix. And when, when Citrix managed desktops are released in Q3, they will also have the capability of activating SD-WAN. So simply put, if a customer's activating uh, virtual apps and desktops in Azure, you can go to that GUI. You probably saw it for 30 seconds in PJ's presentation. It says network connections. Click that, and you can connect SD-WAN from Azure back to the data center and or Azure back to, to the branches. And when you do that, you, of course, you get all the benefits of SD-WAN and going to SaaS and cloud, so on and so forth. So really simple to use. Very easy to talk to your talk to uh, talk to your IT teams and say how how is this useful for me, and it's it's a real convenient way to deliver applications to users and consume apps from the data center. So really powerful story again coming and sometime in Q3 uh, with with many other uh, capabilities like this. Office 365. You heard about this from Brad Anderson. It, it it really works. It really does bring a huge performance experience difference. You know, downloads are three to five times faster. I'm sorry, uh, uploads. Downloads are even 10 times faster. Makes a big difference. And we right now have uh, several customers using this actively, and we, we're seeing a ramp of this. So if you haven't tried this, if you have your data in the cloud with, 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 with Microsoft, you will see a huge performance improvement, and it's very easy to try. Again, one click on the GUI, and, and off you go. Okay. Now, why leave other SaaS behind? All SaaS matters, right? So why not, why not do, do what we're doing with Microsoft Office 65 for every SaaS? So with this, we are introducing a new service. It is called the Cloud Direct Service. Concept is really simple. We connect the branches to a set of, to a cloud network that Citrix runs. From there, we carry the traffic to the SaaS site. So if you have voice and video service that you're consuming in your enterprise, if you have other reliable services needed, such as for maybe for point of sale, it can ride this service and you'll see a significant improvement in application quality and resiliency. Uh, we have right now 10 pops around the world and we'll have more over time. And again, it's all completely managed from the cloud. So really easy to use and a big difference for now all SaaS, not just Microsoft, okay? Cloud, many of our customers are using cloud. Many of you are looking at cloud. Now, if you look at our offering, it's pretty comprehensive. So we started with Azure, good comprehensive solution with Azure. We added Azure Virtual Line earlier this year. We'll be adding this, a similar concept to AWS. So what you see is AWS Transit Gateway. That is a new way to, to manage multiple workloads in, in, in AWS, aggregate them to what's called the Transit Gateway, from there connect, connect, connect that back to the data center or branches. 
really simplifies a situation where there may be multiple workloads in a cloud setting. And we're also happy to introduce that we will be supporting the SD-WAN virtual appliances in Google, in the Google Marketplace as well. So full coverage of the top three clouds. And if you need to have a lot more performance, multi-gigabit performance, you can always go to our partner Equinix, put our appliances in their, in their data centers, and you can, you, you can be assured that we're certified to work in that, as, in that environment as well. So full coverage and full scale available across all clouds. Okay. Now, um, as you're doing so, you still need appliances to run your network. You have to have branch appliances. You have to have data center appliances. And what is happening with SD-WAN is that as more and more customers are looking at more diverse locations, they're realizing that they need a diversity of connectivity. For example, some folks need PPPoE, which is, you know, it's available on DSL modems. Now we have it on the SD-WAN products. Some folks need Metro E, you know, various fiber combinations. You can, be, you can rest assured that we have that capability. We also have things like DS1, which is a very old, exotic connectivity option, but you'll be surprised as to how many locations around the U.S. still only support T1. A lot of these rural locations or the edges of suburbs only have T1 service, so we support that also. So, rich set of connectivity uh, that you can find useful with our product. Of course, a great LTE solution as well. And on the high end, high performance. We've got high, really high performance. You know, 16 gigabit coming up with our new appliance called the 6100. So, if you have a big network or a big data center or multiple data centers, this is the way to go. And you have the richness on the brand side, and we have the scale on the data center side. Okay. Security. As I said, security is becoming even more important in your networks. Why? Because now you're thinking of exiting to the internet from the branch. So it's another point of exposure potentially. So you want to make sure that this is well covered. So we, we give you a lot of choice on this one. First of all, we have a firewall on the appliance. You can use it for many of your use cases. Okay. Secondly, the firewall has application detection for up to 4,500 apps. So you can say this app is allowed, this app is not allowed. So you have a form of branch exit security that is really easy to use. But if you say, I need to have an outside security service, we have great coverage with Zscaler, great coverage with Palo Alto, Symantec, and a few others coming up. So we have a great set of choices for cloud-based security functions. And if you want on-prem, I'm happy to announce that we are deepening our partnership with Palo Alto Networks. Okay. With Palo Alto, we had announced previously a service for what's called the Global Protect Cloud Service, which is their, which is their SWIG, or SWG. Now we will be introducing the ability to run Palo Alto virtual firewalls on Citrix SD-WAN branch appliances. This way you get the best of both worlds. The best SD-WAN in the market with the top of the line, very well known vendor of, SD, of firewall capability, Palo Alto Networks. Two pieces of functionality in the same appliance managed from the cloud. Real easy and very powerful. Okay. Now, all of this is now manageable from the cloud. We introduced a new service called the SD WAN orchestration service. It runs at Citrix Cloud, and it, it's meant to really simplify deployment, management, scaling of SD WAN deployments in your enterprise. It's part of Citrix Cloud, so same login. So if you're using Citrix Cloud today for virtual apps and desktops or other services, same login, same experience. You don't have to do anything new. But what it does is it lets you deploy faster, lets you have much better reporting, lets you have some cross-service analytics. So everything that, there, that our analytics engine is doing will start showing up in, in one shape or form through the orchestrator. And the best part, no servers, no storage, no need to back up data. It's all done by us. We take care of all that for you. Okay. Globally available. Uh, we're adding pops around the world. And again, this has been available for service provider for some time. And as of now, it is available for enterprise consumption. So if you're thinking of deploying SD-WAN, it is available for enterprise consumption as of now. Last piece. 
we're finding that many of our customers prefer Uber versus driving. I don't know about your driving preference, but they prefer managed service. They say, look, I don't know how to run a, ma a large wide area network. I don't know how to deal with all the various things that need to be configured. Can I consume this as a complete service? Whether it's the middle row of the slide, whether it's you know, design, procure telco, deploy and run, or, or whether it's everything that you see on this page. We have a set of managed service providers, partners, that can help you with this. Uh, the, when, when we add our MSP and CSPs, it's close to 100, 100 partners. So if you're looking for a managed service for SD-WAN, we have it. Talk to your salesperson, and then they can point you to one of our partners. Okay? So that's our broad story around SD-WAN. A lot of new things about applications, Microsoft, and services. And if you want to learn more, we'll, 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 we'll show you a list of some of the uh, sessions you can go to. Now let's switch over to the middle. How do we deliver SaaS to users for general purpose SaaS environments or, or cloud, cloud uh, SaaS and websites? This is about what we call intelligent traffic management. Here's a problem statement. Many of you run data centers with applications. You may, have, you may run multiple data centers like on the bottom of that slide. You may use clouds. You may use a combination of those two. You may even be using CDNs to, to deliver video. You might be using all three. When you do so, you have a great infrastructure to run all that. But the unknown is the middle, the internet. You have no control over the internet. You don't know whether the internet's up and running, whether a user sitting here in Atlanta, Georgia is able to connect to your services, or whether a particular carrier like an ISP in Atlanta is performing at, at, at their peak level. That is a challenge. The internet is a blind spot. Now, we, we talked to IEDC and they said, you know, optimizing this application delivery experience in this new world of multiple data centers, multiple clouds is a new challenge. Folks that are delivering application performance, they have to know the internet state. If you don't know, you're blind. So you have to find ways to account for it. You mean visualize it, understand it. And you need ways to go fix it. If you don't fix it, you're going to have poor performance. And the real payoff is to make the middle mile of the internet work along with the ADCs. We can work, make all that work together. That's when you get the best performance. So if you want to read more about this, there is a uh, white paper like this, I think available maybe on the exit, uh, uh, right out there on the booth, at the booth. So if you want to learn more, you can go pick this up, courtesy of, of uh, Citrix and with IDC. Now, so when you, if you listen to their advice, here's what you get. You get a, you get a GSLD service, which combines the best of this cloud or in, like, internet visibility with our ADCs. And you can do two things with it. One, you can visualize the environment and say, what is going on? Are my users receiving a great experience? Are they seeing low latency? Are they seeing high availability? That's what the visualized part of this is. If you take the next step, then, then you get a great experience because we will help steer the traffic to the right data center or, or the right cloud based on the time of day, based on the internet performance, based on their location, so on and so forth. So generally, a much better experience. So if you were at the session today, you heard about CBS, CBS Corp. They're one of the biggest users of this. So if you watch anything on CBS Interactive, it is, we help them do that. There are many others, like Bloomberg, Air France, and Microsoft and LinkedIn that are using this same infrastructure to run their major websites. Really simple. If you're making money on a website, if you're taking money on a website, this will help your business. It's that simple. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Mihir to tell you more about uh, ADC and App Security. Thank you, Chalan. Um, so great uh, announcements, new announcements happening uh, for how do you connect users to applications through the WAN links. The applications could be SaaS, could be web apps, could be virtual, and at the same time going through the blind spot, which is the internet. So let me come back and talk to you about Citrix ADC and application security, which focuses on how do you host the applications and what are we doing in that whole journey uh, on delivering performance and security for applications. 
So big picture, if you go to see our uh, strategy is uh, pretty simple of application first. We want to follow where the applications are going and make sure that our customers have the same look and feel, the same operational consistency and ease of use that they've had for a long time. So the first one is really about uh, hybrid multi-cloud. In the hybrid multi-cloud uh, journey, if you go to see, we have the enterprise portfolio we built for ADCs living on-prem, when applications were built on-prem in data centers. Customers started actually migrating those applications to multiple clouds. And with that multi-cloud journey that emerged, whether they are building it on private clouds or public clouds, the advent of software-based ADCs became predominant. So our goal is to make sure that we can tell our customers we have uh, a unified way for them to host the applications on-premise or in any of the clouds with what we call our ADM portfolio. ADM is uh, Application Delivery Manager, which allows you to look at the entire application delivery uh, infrastructure, manage it, provide analytics on it, and at the same time uh, be used for doing this thing called pooling of licenses. So pooling allows you to disaggregate the hardware from the software and take the software along with you. So US customers can, can use that pool of bandwidth of licenses that you have and run it actually on-prem or run it when you move the workloads to the cloud. And that's the uh, differentiation and what we build actually for customers to benefit from. Now as these apps move into cloud native world, cloud native is when, as PJ showed in the morning, the applications are become modernized. As they become modernized because of uh, digital transformation, for getting greater agility for customer experience or employee engagement, those apps become into these microservices. And these microservices are hosted into Kubernetes clusters, and we are actually following that and building a whole portfolio around cloud-native application delivery. The third one is uh, security is very important for customers. Uh, it's all about not just delivering the applications to users, but securing the applications because of all the hacks going on. So we're building a whole portfolio actually on application security and some new announcements that I'm going to talk about over here. And the fourth one is uh, a lot of us in the morning was talked about consumerization of IT and how the goal is to remove the burden from the IT to manage the entire infrastructure and leverage SaaS models. So we are launching actually ADC as a service, which is the initiative to go and deliver the entire hybrid multi-cloud, the cloud native, and the application security as a service. So not just the control plane, but also the data plane is managed by Citrix, and that removes the burden from IT. At the same time, they get the same operational consistency for managing the infrastructure across a hybrid multi-cloud. So what's new actually in uh, Synergy that we're announcing? Again, in the uh, notion of experience, choice, and security. Um, on the experience side, we are launching basically the application delivery manager with uh, insights into analytics of how the applications are performing, how the infrastructure is performing, and providing role-based access dashboards to you as customers. So that's a big differentiation that we are launching today. On the choice side, we have a variety of different things we've launched for hybrid multi-cloud, uh, for cloud native, and for ADC as a service to provide a choice to customers of software ADC portfolio with BLX, which is a new offering, a choice for customers to leverage the hardware and software separately, where they can disaggregate the software into a pool of licenses and take that along. So we are launching actually a new set of offers for pool licensing and simplifying the journey for that. The third one is around cloud native. For cloud native app delivery, we are launching a whole new portfolio that I'm going to talk about, inserting into multiple stacks, and then ADC as a service I talked about. From a security standpoint, there are two new uh, things that we're launching. The first one is around bot management and what we're doing on the ADC footprint itself to go and prevent bot attacks. And the second one is around cloud native uh, API security. So let me go and drill into each one of these. Um, let's talk about the hybrid multi-cloud first. So if you go to see from a platform's standpoint, they're fundamental for applications when they're deployed on-prem. Applications deployed on-prem in customers' data centers require high-performance platforms, and we build this high-performance journey for a long time. We have this single scalable platform, like a one RU or a two RU, very small footprint to go all the way from one gig all the way up to 200 gig with our MPX and SDX portfolio. So this is something which is unmatched from a price performance standpoint. And then to extend that, we're gonna have the SDX, which is a multi-tenant portfolio 
come out in the second half of this year on the mid-range and the high end. So this is actually a, a very competitive uh, footprint as well as price performance portfolio for, for applications running on the prem. And to add the innovation continue, continually, we have the TLS 1.3, which is a new standard, which is uh, going to be hardware accelerated inside this portfolio in software as well as hardware. Uh, so that's another differentiation. And then ISSU, so in-service software upgrades, so you can get graceful upgrades without any loss of connectivity in a HA pair is again another innovation that we have on this entire portfolio. So again, platforms continues, that innovation continues for applications running on customer's premise. The, as I mentioned, that as customers migrate towards the cloud, whether it's uh, sitting on-premise or sitting cloud, sitting off-premise in public clouds, the software EDC footprint is very important for customers, where the journey is like, let's make everything software from an application delivery standpoint for applications running in clouds. So we already have the industry-leading VPX, which is a VM form factor. We launched the CPX, which is a container form factor, <coughs> and now yet another form factor called BLX, which is a bare metal uh, Linux process that customers can run on any of their servers that they want to bring along. So this, this again, advances the uh, flexibility and choice that customers have to run application delivery portfolio across any part of the infrastructure, with software being one of the uh, key tenets. And again, BLX will be again managed with the same uh, flexibility that we provided with pooling of licenses, as well as with ADM being our single manager across any of these form factors. The two uh, simplified pool, so pool license, how many of you actually are familiar with pool licensing? I'm just curious to know show of hands. How many of you, few hands go up for pool licensing? So for those of you who are not familiar with pool licensing, we released this a while back um, in which in pooling of licenses, we, we separate out the hardware from the software. So you have a hardware component and then you have a software component. Or for software ADCs, you have a instance and then you have the instance running the, the entire set of features, which is a software ADC. So we separated out actually the capacity of the hardware software from the, the feature set, what we call pooling of licenses. So the software part of the, of, the, of the disaggregation is what we launched as the pooling. So pooling allows you flexibility. You can have a pool of 10 gig and then use that 10 gig across any of these instances of hardware and software. So that's the flexibility that we have in the industry, which, uh, which is a very competitive advantage, as well as for customers, is a big value add. <laughs> So today, if you go to see the pooling of licenses required, you to buy a pool license, and then maybe a software ADC or hardware ADC, and then to manage the entire portfolio ADM. So with these two new offers, we've simplified the journey for customers to adopt pool licensing, as well as run ADM, which is uh, the, the application delivery manager. The first, uh, on the left, the pool licensing offer is where the software is run as a subscription, and the hardware is what <coughs> uh, you're gonna buy perpetually. In the right side uh, of the equation, we have basically a, a pool, simplified pool offer with the entire stack of ADM service um, in a hybrid rights form. Hybrid rights meaning you can run ADM on-premise or in the cloud. Um, the pool licensing, which disaggregates the bandwidth part from the hardware and software, the hardware and the software, the entire thing as a subscription. So for customers that actually wanna deploy things in a more um, subscription form and basically use that model. We have the right side, which is a very sticky, very value added model for customers. Simplifies uh, the buying part and simplifies how their procurement uh, is set up from a subscription standpoint. <coughs> now, given that customers are going, how many of you customers, I'm curious to know, are on a hybrid multi cloud journey where your applications are moving to public clouds and you require public cloud footprint? of the application infrastructure. Just curious to know, actually. So it seems like everybody's on-prem. Few people, hands, few hands went out for, for public cloud. So for <coughs> those of you folks who are actually are taking the applications and leveraging the public cloud infrastructure, we've taken the same portfolio built on-premise and taken that and delivered with the capabilities required for public cloud consumption, which is pay-as-you-grow, consumption-based uh, adoption, and so on. So we have, we have auto scale on AWS and Azure that we've launched, that released in 13.0, that allows you to do front end as well as back end auto scaling. Auto scaling means as the applications increase, you can scale out. As the applications have less number of connections coming in, you can scale in. And that way you just pay for pay as you grow and not for, the, not for a static kind of bandwidth. 
So autoscale is a key uh, uh, innovation that we have. Um, <coughs> the second one is on the application delivery manager side. We have uh, three new announcements that we're we launching to uh, visualize the application infrastructure, to, to uh, detect anomalies, uh, to understand how the applications are performing, and provide recommendations to take, uh, with those insights, take them into remediation action. So the first one is around in our ADM service. So ADM, again, is an application delivery manager to basically manage the entire infrastructure. We have a service, a SaaS service, that is part of Citrix Cloud. As Chalan talked about for SD-WAN Orchestrator, we have something similar for the application delivery manager. <coughs> so given that we have uh, this ADM service running in the public cloud, we make use of ML models with a large data lake we collect from uh, various sources. And with that data lake, we can now make, uh, with using machine learning and AI-based models, we can make quick determination, determination of what the issues are, what the anomalies are, and also in a predictive fashion, figure out what could be issues coming up in the future. So that's the first new innovation that we have, which again leapfrogs the competition. The second one is uh, role-based dashboards. So if you go to see, there are various roles uh, with US customers. You may have IT admins looking at the IT view. You have security admins. You have lines of business that only want to look at their view. So we're announcing basically in ADM dashboards where you can actually customize it for the role, role that you have. So that way, an IT admin only looks at basically the entire ADC infrastructure as well as uh, the applications running on it. A line of business only cares about his application and how his application is performing. A security admin only cares about how is the security SSL policies as well as uh, application security functioning. So that's another key part. <coughs> the third innovation we have is uh, what we call intuitive service graphs. The service graphs actually are a cool way to visualize how the application flow is from users to applications, as well as between the different microservices in a cloud-native environment, and allows you to go quickly pinpoint of how each of those applications are performing with the scoring that we have, and the health scoring and the risk scoring for the application and the microservice. We can exactly tell you what the issue is if you pinpoint and go deeper into it. And this way, you can know if a workspace user is running an application which is having a degradation issue. You can quickly go into the service graph and look at the service graph views, look at which the red, yellow, greens are, and pinpoint on what the source of that issue is. So if you look at the flow of an, app, a flow of an admin, we have the unified app dashboard, which is the first part they want to look at to see how the apps are performing. The second one is look at the health scoring of the ADC infrastructure. So in a single view, you can look at the red, yellow, greens for the ADC infra infrastructure, which is the new announcement we have. The third one is health score of each app. So this is where the line of business uh, view comes in, and you, you don't need to look at one app. The fourth one is going around web transaction analytics. So as users come in through the outside from web traffic coming into the application to access the applications, we can exactly know where the users are coming from, what is uh, uh, the uh, response time for each of the transactions, where the response time is having issues. So this provides a lot of insights into web transactions. And the last one is with all this data we have in the application delivery manager, we can pinpoint if anything is not responding or having issues or predict what could be the issues going forward. So a lot of innovations. Again, this is very sticky. This allows us to go differentiate and you as customers with a single pane of glass exactly look at how applications are performing. So let me just show you quick, uh, some quick dashboards. This uh, is the uh, hybrid multi-cloud uh, view for infrastructure analytics that we have. So this shows the bubbles are the application delivery controllers running in various places. The bubble size actually shows what is the throughput of the ADC. The red, yellow, green shows how is that ADC infrastructure performing. And things like over there on the right side that is shown like ADC instance score. So we score each instance. We can look at availability as well as system data for that ADC to see if it's running out of resources, is any saturation, and things of that sort. So again, very cool in terms of one dashboard to see your entire application delivery infrastructure running on premise or running in any of the clouds and pinpoint and see what the issues are. The second one we have is the line of business application dashboard. So I talked about the app dashboard showing all the applications and how they're performing and health scoring of each application as well as risk scoring. <coughs> this is another innovation we have where IT admins want to provide a service to their lines of business, like a value-added service. And this could be a very great value-added service to provide to the line of business hosting in their own application to give them a, their own view. With their own view, you can see exactly how the application is scored, 
what the issues are in the health of the application in ADM, and that way make deterministic calls on what uh, remedial actions to take, depending on how it's performing. So next one I'm going to talk about is cloud native. So we talked a little bit about in the morning of how um, IT is trying to basically modernize applications so that the response times are faster, better engagement with customers. So there is a whole journey evolving where analysts predict more than 50% of the customers are going towards cloud native. Cloud native means uh, breaking up the applications into microservices, hosting them in Kubernetes, and making them very agile in terms of how do you upgrade, how do you fix problems, and so on. So again, for cloud native, we're taking the same expertise that we built over many years on the ADC footprint for hybrid multi-cloud, taking that towards the cloud native portfolio that is already shipping and ready, and we're announcing now three new innovations. The first innovation is around what we have on uh, integration of CPX, which is a container-based footprint in a Kubernetes cluster, <coughs> integrating that with the Istio control plane from Google. So this is where the journey goes, where you need a control plane, data plane kind of model, and we are integrating that with the latest and greatest uh, innovations happening in that uh, front for ingress control as well as for service mesh. So again, great innovation over there, where customers are going. The second one is around the uh, ecosystem build out. So uh, the Kubernetes uh, is actually got a whole cloud native uh, foundation, cloud foundation uh, ecosystem coming, coming around uh, with open source components, as well as a lot of vendors are building their own uh, uh, vertical stacks. So we are, we are actually embedded in all the open source uh, tools that CNCF has in this journey as well as we are integrated on all the stacks with our CPX data plane and then ADM to manage and provide insights. So we are already in EKS and AWS. We are already part of uh, Azure with Azure's uh, Kubernetes service. This one is announcing two new models. One is the OpenShift with Red Hat partnership we have, where we are part of their entire stack for, for cloud-native Kubernetes deployments. And the second one is around morning that was disclosed by Rob Enslin about Google Anthos and thus is their hybrid multi-cloud initiative, and we are taking the same learnings that we have on our application delivery that we've launched over many years, over 15 plus years, and taking that to provide better scale, better resiliency, better availability, better security in a Google and thus environment with CPX. So again, that's a great uh, new addition. The third one is around the service graphs, uh, which I talked about in the previous slide, that we extend to cloud native. So now you can actually see exactly how these microservices are performing and the health of these microservices, pinpoint the problems and auto-remediate. What we are going towards in the future is uh, more like a self-driving network where all the insights coming in from the CPXs or any of the form factors we've deployed across any part of the clouds give us enough information <coughs> to exactly pinpoint what the issues are and then provide recommendations to the admins or auto-correct them in the model which is going towards a self-driving network. That's the journey we are on. So how do you buy this stuff? So in terms of uh, the buying, what I talked about, the simplified pooling, is the same model that applies over here for cloud native. We are selling the, the CPX or any of the form factors required for cloud native for, from an ingress standpoint with the ingress controller. And then we have ADM to provide, the, with the ADM service or ADM on-prem to provide the insights into how the microservices are performing. And we are integrated into the entire ecosystem. So let's say if you're a Red Hat OpenShift customer, or any of the other customers, like a Google Anthos customer, we are part. We are already part of that entire uh, ecosystem. So when you buy that, CPX is built in. This is a, just a, a picture which shows what the service graph looks like. The bubbles shown over there are the microservices that are going through a CPX. So we exactly know all the communication going through different microservices. And this way we can detect anomalies if the services are not supposed to talk to each other. We can detect issues in each microservice if they run out of capacity or anything of that sort, and provide the, the attributes in ADM to the insights, to the admins. So remediation actions can be taken for that. In terms of application security, again, it's all about not just uh, delivering, but securing applications. We have two new innovations. Uh, one is on bot management, second is on API security. So for bot management, if you go to see um, Half the traffic on the website coming in is coming from non-humans. That's what bots are. Bots are like non-humans trying to basically uh, go and attack the application, uh, have issues on, create issues on user experience, or also on business transactions. And the way they do it is by uh, credential stuffing, or by things mentioned over there, like content scraping, like screen, screen scraping, or like with password spraying. So those are some of the techniques used by these bots to go and attack applications. So now with our innovations we are launching here, 
in Synergy, we can detect through behavioral mechanisms on the device on which the traffic is coming through, if it's a bot, as well as through signatures to detect most of the common bots. And this again, how do you buy this? You have the ADC that you buy bot for load balancing. Now we're extending that to go and have security from WAF as well as with bot. The second one is API protection. <coughs> so API protection for traditional as well as cloud native apps is very important. Why? Because every uh, application now is talking to other applications through APIs that are exposed. So what we are launching here is how do you protect those APIs when the communication happens for the simple things like rate limiting, how many APIs can come in, for things like authentication, authorization, encryption. Those are some simple capabilities that are very important for API protection. We built it in the ADC itself. And we have built uh, automation with the cloud native environment to, go and to make sure we can go and um, configure this API protection in the ADCs. So again, very uh, important innovations coming for protecting the application on both side as well as on the API protection on uh, traditional and cloud native apps. The last innovation is, um, is how do you deliver everything as a service? Because if you go to see the innovation, innovations happening today are all on the SaaS side, where the IT admins uh, want to be relieved from managing the entire infrastructure, from managing the applications. That's why SaaS models are very prevalent, whether it's for application hosting, or using applications, or for managing the infrastructure. We're taking it one step forward by saying that the entire application delivery infrastructure and security portfolio will be managed by Citrix. So in the morning, you saw Citrix manage desktops. This is about Citrix managing the entire ADC portfolio. So this way, you get ease of use. Ease of use because the admin has to just go to the Citrix portal for ADC as a service, and everything else is taken care of in a hybrid multi-cloud manner. So that way, the applications are running on-premise or in any of the clouds. We are launching with AWS first, but we are going to go across the entire infrastructure premise. <coughs> it's consumption-based, so the customers don't have to pay for the entire infrastructure and keep it static. This is pay as you grow. So as the ex applications expand, or number of applications expand, capacity expands, number of clouds expand, we can go across the entire board and then just charge the customers. The customer only pays for what they pay. Uh, the third one is auto-scaling, which is part of the entire equation for clouds. And last one is operational simplicity. So all the tools, all the training, that you've had across you know, 15 plus years of Netscaler, all those things are actually a leverage when we take this journey into ADC as a service. So lots of new innovations happening across the board. Um, we just go through some final takeaways. So I talked first about uh, applications on the workspace and connecting to uh, uh, users connecting to applications running actually in data centers and how networking powers that workspace. <coughs> Okay. This. On, so on SD1, I, I hope it was pretty obvious that we, we have full cloud coverage, we have full SaaS coverage. So if you want to have a always-on experience with Citrix apps and desktops, any SaaS, including Microsoft, and all clouds, we have a great solution. And I, on an ITM, if you are running a website, and if you're either making money or taking money, please consider ITM. You'll, you'll be delighted to have that and to run to, with your business. And just to keep it simple on the uh, ADC side, which is hosting the applications, it's all about ADM. ADM is the application delivery manager. That's the part which is used to manage the entire infrastructure, provide insights, take remedial action, and do pool of licenses. So that's the first part. The second part is about we provide a choice to customers in the journey for apps because we are app first, whether it's a hybrid multi-cloud sitting with three-tier traditional applications or taking them towards cloud native applications. So again, a lot of new innovations, a lot of new excitement around um, Citrix networking, powering the workspace, and hope you all have a great uh, rest of the next three days. If any questions, you can come by over here. Yeah, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I know no we're, questions. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank, you, for, you. thank you for listening.